This fish patiently lays on the bottom, waiting for its prey, and gives an unmistakable thump on the end of the line. Both its eyes are on one side of its body, and it looks almost prehistoric. It's a favorite for the table, and a big one is affectionately called a doormat. We are talking flounder here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Welcome back to another week here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. We're your hosts, Bree Gabrielle and Captain Tommy Derringer, who's filling in for Captain Rick this week. You are back. We're really glad you're here to talk about flounder. I know it's kind of your bread and butter up there on the Alvey Reels Northeast region. It is. You know what, Bree? We have a lot of flounder. I think I'm going to say that we have the best flounder fishing Whoa. in Florida, the Northeast region. I think it is. Okay. We get some big ones, and we have a lot of them there. And yeah, they're, they're fun. Everybody can catch them. They're easy to catch. Relatively easy to catch. Relatively. Gotta yes. know what you're doing That's still. Right. You're All right, well, I know you and Dave are going to have a lot to chat about the CCA workbench. Dave, are you prepared to ask some questions or what? I am, and that was a pretty <laughs> bold statement. That, that was, was a bold, bold statement. statement. He's, you know, standing his ground for his I don't know. I think there. it is. He yeah. is. Well, He's probably right. He's probably right. <laughs> well, this next region is going to rival that statement. Another That's flounder right. hotspot is the Real Legend Central East region. So let's get Captain Jim Ross on the line to get the weekend started. Jim, do you agree with Tommy? I'm going to give him the nod on this one. I think, I think Thanks, we're a Jim. close second, but all of the oyster and rock to mud type of flats and things that they have, they've got a lot more in that region than anybody else does. And, and those are the type of places that flounder like. In fact, in my Bell Central East region, that's where people go to target the fish. They sit there and target those fish along jetty rocks. And so all three inlets are where you want to look for flounder along that rock to sand or rock to mud edge. And that's where you're going to find good numbers of them, especially in the fall time. The flounder want to sit there because of the current flowing and bringing bait fish and shrimp to them. And you know, as that tide rises and falls, make sure that you're working your baits with the current and not against the current because that's the way that the flounder are facing. They're waiting for something to come to them. They're an opportunist and they're waiting to pounce on something. Now, we get cold fronts in the fall time and November, December is the best part uh, of the year for flounder in my region. You can catch some really big doormats at that time of the year, especially at those inlets I talked about. But the rest of the year, we do some other things that are kind of interesting around here. And so, what you know, you can catch those fish year round out on the reefs and wrecks that are in about 40 to about 90 feet of water. And we do a lot of that on those reefs and wrecks down here. Slide and sinker rig, small fish, you know, small bait fish, jig with a, a fish bite curly tail on it uh, will work as well. Um, when you're working those reefs and wrecks, that, that uh, upperman jig that R and R tackle makes, and the one ounce size is a great one, especially the yellow uh, with the white with yellow tail. That bucktail on it is fantastic. Most of our flounder run about two to three pounds, but you can get some real doormats, like I was saying, especially in the fall time. And some of those fish will go ten pounds. And I've got a picture here, and this is what kind of what I was talking about. Uh, my son was out the other day, and we caught some kingfish. But then the fellow was saying, "Hey, is there anything else to catch?" And you take that jig, you drop it down on the bottom, had a little puggy strip uh, on one and a little fish bite on the other, and you can get some nice flounder right there along with your kingfish on those reefs and wrecks. Now, speckled trout are another thing in my region. Captain Mark Gibson from NaughtyDiverCharters.com said that you want to get uh, out there with live croakers along the ICW, and he says the incoming tide this week has been best in places where uh, the, flood, the tide is flooding up around an oyster bar. So anywhere south of the South Bridge at New Smyrna seems to be holding some fish around. It's a Browns Bay, Mike's Cut, uh, even the docks and, and shoreline riprap along that edge all the way down into Edgewater is starting to hold some pretty nice uh, trout right now. And those, some of those fish are going, you know, pretty good size. They're averaging right around three to four pounds in there. And some of those fish are going even a little bigger. I've got a picture here of uh, one that Captain Martin Gibson got on a fish bite the other day. And pretty nice little little fish. He's like, you can see those mangrove edges and those oysters. Um, but we also get them on five inch shad assassins, jerk baits, things of that nature in the Houdini, watermelon slice and gold pepper shiner colors when you're working around some of those flats, especially down in the Sebastian area. And then swinging offshore, tarpon right now looking pretty good. 
um, all up and down the beaches from Ponce all the way down to Sebastian, you're going to find them following the glass minnow pod. So wherever the glass minnows are, that's where you need to be. Uh, and then at Canaveral lately, there's been some pretty good pogey pods as well, and they've actually started to concentrate back on those. But the glass minnows are really their top choice for, for food right now. And if you can find glass minnow pods, that's where you're going to find them. So look at places like the Vero Cove, look up along the beaches of Melbourne, in the Atlantic, a satellite beach. Those beaches are doing pretty good right now as well. Most of our tarpon are running about 50 to 100 pounds. And you can also catch them on fly from the beach. That's the neat thing about fly fishing when the tarpon are on the glass minnows is you can actually target them from the beach because they'll push the mo they'll push those minnows all the way to the shoreline. And I've got a picture here of Andrew Berube. He's a friend of ours, uh, a friend of the shows. And this is him with a blow a broken rod that his buddy went and got some duct tape and duct taped the rod back together. And then the second picture is of the fish that he landed nice. on that broken rod oh, man. right there off Pretty of awesome. uh, Melbourne and Indy Atlantic Beach. Duct tape wins again. That the makes MacGyver me so of happy. Fly <laughs> that's some cool stuff. I tell you, uh, you know, he's talking about catching a memory. That's catching one right there. Now, my last species is cobia, and we had some cold water episodes, especially from Vero up through about Melbourne Beach. And so the Sebastian area and the South uh, Canaveral area, out, it, one, one or two days they got up into the middle part of the, the Canaveral area as well. We got that cold water kind of pushing the cobia up there. So keep your eyes out, but places like the High Bar, Bethel Shoals, Pelican Flats, and any of the wrecks in 16 to 90 feet are great places to find the cobia. Now, a lot of these fish are under the minimum size limits. So you're really going to have to be careful not to gaff these fish because they're 31, 32 inches at the fork. They look bigger in the water. You know, you're excited. It's a cobia. But please net these fish instead of gaffing them because a lot of them are going to be 35 inches in another couple of months if you put them back in the water now without a gaff hole in them. Uh, one ounce Upperman jig is doing work once again for us. That r, &R jig is a fantastic uh, small jig for these smaller cobia. And sometimes you'll find them on, on rays as well. We've had a couple of rays showing up lately with that cooler water. And then I've got a picture here of uh, Joe and Susan Daly that were out with me the other day. They came down from Tommy's region actually and came down and fished with me. And you can see one of those r, &R jigs I was talking about that's good for the cobia and for the flounder. Thanks, nice Jim. That's, yeah, that's some great tips on those cobia to, you know, not to gap them, net them if you can't, or if you think they're just, oh, just a little small. It, it, yeah. Save them, let them grow. They'll, they'll be, they'll be, they grow so fast, they'll be big in no time. That's right. All right, Jim, great report as always. And here are the Rodan Marine Systems hotspots for the Central East region. Inshore, tarpon along the beaches, use streamer style flies, half inch to one ounce, or half ounce to one ounce bucktail jigs, or live bait fish on a circle hook for fish to 100 pounds, and then offshore mangrove snapper on the reefs and wrecks in 70 to 130 foot of water. Chum heavily and chunk with sardines or pogies for fish to 10 pounds. That's a that's a good mangrove snapper, 10 pretty, powder. That's pretty decent. I'd take that. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll get ready, Real Legends lovers, because now through August 10th, enjoy 30% off Real Legends apparel for the entire family at nice. reallegends.com. You can see that right there. And we also, it's a its a new month, which means we have a new Real Legends trivia question. Uh -huh. All you have to do is visit the Real Legends Facebook page every Friday to answer the trivia question of the week. And with this week being, of course, Flounder, the one winner who leaves the correct answer in the comments will win a Real Legends gift card. Tell me you, you can't answer this one. Oh, dang it. Are you ready for the question? Yes. It's actually true or false. Okay, true or false. Flounder are born as a pelagic style fish with eyes on both sides of their heads. Mm. Hmm. Good luck, everyone. Tom already knows the answer. All right, <laughs> let, let's talk with our captain, Jeff Hageman, in the Discover Crystal River Northwest region and see what we're reeling in this weekend. Go for it, Hag. Well, I have to agree with Tommy. He does have the best flounder fishing in the state. So, But thanks, we've Jeff. got flounder throughout my region, from as shallow as two feet all the way out to 35 feet of water, over sand, sand holes, around reefs and wrecks is a unique way we catch them, and they're doing that right now in that 35 to 40 feet of water. So any of our artificial reefs or wrecks, you can get out there and catch them. Just get a little bit off the wreck, get where the sand is, coming up to the wreck, and they, they stage in those areas too, looking for, for bait. But soft plastics work really good. Any kind of shad or shrimp plastic imitation on the back of a jig head works really good. Um, that's a great color for them with white. Um, jig heads, bucktails with belly strips behind them offshore works really good. They're a great eating fish, either fried, 
you can stuff them with crab meat or lobster meat. And it's a really hard to beat fish for the table. Staying inshore, Captain Craig, Ken Craig of Ozona, Keys Marinos reports in the redfish bite right now is very good, and he's starting to see a significant amount of schools moving up from Trout Key Bay to the Outer Islands. He's using live pinfish on a three-aught circle hook with 25-pound test leader. He's focusing on any um, areas that have current break or structure holding mullet. So look for those mullet and find those redfish. Also, there's a few snook while he's redfishing in there, but you need to bump up your leader if you start catching too many snook. That 30-pound test will help you land a lot more of them. And I've got a photo here of a nice redfish turned in by Captain Ken and Captain Mike Manning of Action Fishing Charters out of Tarpon Springs out of uh, Anclote area and said north of the Cody, the redfish bite has been really good on the top of the tide, fishing around mangrove points that have mullet too. Pinfish and sardines have been the bait of choice on a 3 out trocar circle hook with 20-pound test to 25-pound test fluorocarbon leader. And he's freelining those baits and not putting them under a cork. Moving offshore, Captain Rob Davenport of Big Nasty Charters out of St. Pete reports good grouper bite right now throughout the day. Best has been live baits, large pinfish, but because of the red tide, our baits have been a little hard to find. You can't find baits. You can still use frozen out there. He's been catching them on frozen sardines and frozen squid and also using vertical jigs. He's using anywhere from 80 to 100 pound fluorocarbon leader with a six to eight aught trail car circle hook and 10 ounces of weight. We got a photo here of Ryan with one of his biggest gags he's caught on a recent trip with a Rob. It's a nice one there. Nice. Staying with Captain Rob out of St. Pete, he said this year's Red Snappers fishing has been epic. They limited out on pretty much every trip. It just closed down. Most of the fish were being caught right now in anywhere from 150 feet to 200 feet of water, six to eight ounces of lead, 80 pound fluorocarbon leader, and a six aught trocar hook. He's looking forward to next season. He said it was a great year, and he's catching a lot of fish that are this size on this photo I got right here from Jeff and Rob. That's a stud right there. Ooh, that's a nice one there, Pretty. Jeff. Pretty. Thanks, man. Great report. I always say I just want to be Jeff when I grow up. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> my hero. Me Thanks, too. Jeff. Here are the Ozella Keys Marina hotspots for the Northwest region. Inshore, snook around the bridges, docks, and the outside bars and passes. Use free lines, sardines, and pinfish for bait. And then offshore, grouper are biting in 55 to 110 feet of water over rock piles and ledges. Use pinfish on a standard bottom rig. I know before the show you're complaining about the keys being so hot, and Jeff Hagman goes, "Oh well, I'll be in the AC or in the water." He's a, he's a baller. Excuse he's a, yeah. us. We'll be like him when we grow up someday, Tommy. Uh, just that's what I hope for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, the Garmin Panhandle region is in our sights next, but first we're seeing what flounder pounder tips Tommy and Dave have for us at the CCA Workbench for Academy Sports and Outdoors <gasps> Rigs and Techniques. Yep, we're going to yep. find out what kind of hook is the best hook to use for a flounder. Oh, that's mm. it right Real there. Hub, yep. Well, I'm hooked. We'll be back. <laughs> Dave, here we are at the Academy Sports and Outdoors, Rigs and Techniques at the CCA Workbench. We're talking Correct. flatties, we're talking flounder. Yeah, man, you know, they're one of the most sought after fish because they taste so good and they're fun they to do. catch. You know, they're a weird fish. You know, everybody's been talking about it. They're, they, they're a flat fish. They're one of the flat fishes. There's a bunch of different species uh, all over the world. Most of the ones we catch are the southern flounder. Right. We have the gulf flounder and there's a fringed flounder. There's, there's quite a few different ones. Um, but they all pretty much eat the same way and do the same things. Right. They're a camouflage guy. He's a master of camouflage. He can ch he can change the spots on him when he when he gets down in the mud. He looks for places that look like him, mm -hmm. and he he can see really well. And usually, if you want to target these things, the first thing you want to do is find a place where there's a lot of bait. Bait is key. Correct. Uh, we were talking about this. It's it, you know anytime I'm flounder fishing, especially when the tide's low and the bait's bunched up, look for those concentrations of bait. Right. They love to sit under that bait. That's what you know. That's what they're doing. They're there to feed at that low tide. That's what they're doing. So right. And the they will be there until you know the bait goes away. They right. like to be in that in that big 
places where the bait's coming through and that's where they lay. And if we put our baits pretty close to them, that's how we get bites out of them. Now, they, they ambush, they're ferocious predators. They have a they're pretty, very aggressive, pretty yes. good sized mouth and very sharp teeth. And what they do is they grab baits and they crush them and they kill the bait with their teeth. And, you know, because they're very sharp. And instead of engulfing a bait and going away, they grab it with their teeth. And yep. therefore, when you're using live baits, especially like a mud minnow, which is the best bait for them, yep. a mud minnow, or Small a finger mullet or a live shrimp on a, on a jig head, right. you gotta let them eat it. I, I, if any time I've ever done a seminar or written an article about flounder, I always mm. talk about when you get that thump, right. distinctive flounder thump, you gotta wait a little bit before right. you set the hook. Because he'll, he'll flare up, grab it, come down and Sit. start chewing on right. it. Right. And if you set the hook when he hasn't swallowed it, you're most of the time going to get that Sancocho yep. just like a blue marlin, right. you know, because you fed Your bait it. has no scales on it exactly. and no you flounder on it either. You didn't let him eat it long right. enough. Now, when you were fishing with that, with that mud minnow or that little finger mullet, this is one of your favorite rigs right here, a fish finder rig. Yeah, this is going to be kind of the go-to rig. Um, this and just a heavier jig head, but it's real simple. It's just a, a slip sinker above a swivel with about 18, maybe 24 inches of fluorocarbon leader below it, and then some diamond fluorocarbon. Some curve. diamond fluorocarbon. <laughs> and you know, we were talking, you just teased the hook, that. right? So this is a, a kale hook. Right. Which I think is, is the best hook going. You know, it's, um, it's, it's kind of like a wide gap circle hook. It really is. And because you're using a mud minnow or, a, or another little bait, and they have that weird shaped mouth, you know, they got, it's all crooked on mm -hmm. one side of their huge face. Teeth. And those huge teeth, that thing has that large gap, so it allows it to right. get in there and get around that corner. Right, you don't need to rip his lips off no. when you're using this hook. Basically real tight and give him a little hook set. Yeah, but just set it just like a circle hook, you know. If, if you can do it with just winding, that's even better. Um, you're allowed to keep, they just had new uh, regulations come in in that's March right. for, yep. the 20, for 2021. You're only allowed to keep five now, five fish per person. Bumped that it up a little bit, Went right? from 12 to 14 inches. Mm -hmm. So, you know, make sure that you know, you're not keeping one that's you know, 12 inches anymore. So, you know, Dave, this rig is another one that they'll eat. They're, they are really aggressive. The thing is you gotta get it in front of those fish. Right. But, you know, this saltwater assassin elite shiner right here on a jig head, I mean, this is a bait we use for redfish a lot, but the, the flounder love this too. This is super simple to just yep. drag this across He's the bottom. 15 pound braid and a 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. Yep. I also like to use just a, a plain jig head with a shrimp. You know, I like to put a shrimp on backwards, just like if I'm fishing for trout or reds, yep. and drag that along the bottom. Um, that'll even work in some of the, you know, it works a lot of good, really good in flats and around docks and stuff, but it'll even work in inlets and stuff, you know, when, when, you, if the, t when the tide starts to slack off. Up just gotta bump that up, the weight up Yeah, a just bit. make sure you use a bigger jig. Yep. When I, we're up in Cape Canaveral, we, we fish around the channel markers. About this time of year, they're starting to come in really good into the inlet, and we'll fish a pilchard or Best the finger mullet yep. right on the bottom next to the channel marker. You'll anchor up away from the channel marker and try to float your bait down close to the bottom right by the channel marker. And they will sometimes be stacked up all around the channel markers, just like they will around deep Rex, water docks and stuff. Yeah, wrecks or reefs. But you were showing me that you like to use a spinner bait as this well. This is, you know what, this is one of the a, most a secret. Well, this, you know, this is the, probably my favorite way to really target flounder is to use either, this is an R-Bend spinner bait. You can use an inline, which is a little more weedless, right. um, which goes through the Spartina grass by us really well. Um, but it's so much fun. I like to throw it on a bait caster. You can throw it on a spinning rod too, but a bait caster is fun. You throw this thing down a grass line or just down the flat and just reel it so it's real slow so you're feeling that thump just right above the bottom. And man, when he thumps this thing, that feeling, man, he just stops the bait caster. Yeah. It's a really cool feeling. And, and this one, you don't really have to wait for him to get it because he's right. coming up and boom and grabbing that whole thing. It's, right, he's not chewing on that one. And, it, and right. it's moving so quickly that it's a it's pretty much, he's either gonna be on or he's not. Right. And, but you're right, it's a lot of fun doing it. And also you you showed me you had another really cool trick. Yeah, Which so, I would think would be counterintuitive to keeping right. your bait on the bottom is using right. the popping cork. So, you know, if you're in, fishing a, a scenario where the tide's coming out of like a little run out, and you know that it's only a couple feet deep or, right. you know, 18 inches deep. Tie your leader on there accordingly, however deep you think it is, maybe a couple inches off the bottom. You can toss this up current and let this guy go real slow through that area where the bait fish are hanging out. And Keeps this, him from dragging in the bottom if, if there's right. stuff on the bottom. Yeah, he's looking up. He's looking up for that thing to, to come by him. So, All right. uh, but 
what's cool about this is when this thing goes, it's not <laughs> usually gonna disappear. It'll just stop a lot of times. Right. And maybe just go a little bit under the water. Let it sit there for a minute. And let him eat it, yep. let him eat it, let yep. him eat it. But that's that's a fun way to do it. It doesn't always work, but um, also when you're doing that, you're gonna catch some redfish and trout right. as well. I, so. You know, I, around, you were talking about docks and stuff earlier. If you, if you know a place that's close to an inlet where there's a boat, like a Coast Guard boat or some place where it comes in and out a lot and you're allowed to fish there, sometimes if even if you're not allowed to fish there, <laughs> where there's a where there's a nice dip in the, in between the docks, yep. I like to throw a nice big heavy pompano pompano jig like one of these with the fish bites with on some that. fish bites on it yep. and I even like to throw this in the surf you know in places uh, around Apalachicola and all those places I was Pat Deneen up there trying to catch these uh, flounder and we would cast them up in the in the inlet and bounce them around and yeah, be sure fun. enough Never we'd done catch, that before. yeah we'd catch little flounders on these things it's a really cool a lot of fun for those all right too. Dave that's a lot of flounder talk it was a lot of <laughs> flounder, lot of flounder talk. talk dang you guys didn't, no, we didn't even talk about there. gigging them either yeah we won't talk about oh that. shoot maybe at the end of the show <laughs> talk about that. All right, it may be August, but fall is just around the corner in the Garmin Panhandle region, which means good things for your flounder bite. Tell us more, Pat. Hey, Bree, I tell you what, flounder fishing can be good in the Panhandle, particularly in the fall. Currently, many of the flounder being harvested, hook and line, are coming from the St. Joe Bay area. Uh, in that bay, they got those big sandy potholes on all that grass flats, and, and flounders are targeted inside those, those sandy, you know, grass or sandy potholes, you know, by just like Dave and, and Tommy were just talking, you know, jigging or, or, or baiting on the bottom. Uh, with that being said, it's fair to say most of the flounder being harvested right now in the panhandle are actually taken by gigging at night in the bays and the sound, just like we y'all just didn't talk about, but gigging is very popular. <laughs> um, but things are gonna change when the first co couple cold fronts start rolling through in October. Many of the flounders leave the bays and head out to that shallow structure in the Gulf and that's when the hook and line fishing really gets good around the uh, the, the big concrete blocks that hold the, the sea buoy in place, any nearshore structure, the marinas and whatnot uh, close to the inlets, the, uh, the residential docks, all these flounders are leaving the bays and it's kind of a mass exodus. Uh, fishermen, fishermen target them using bull minnows and finger mullets on a short leader, Carolina rig with a kale hook, which is a silly looking hook, but it's very effective for flounder fishing. And then also a paddle tail bass assassin slowly work along the bottom around the marinas near the inlets. You know, just bouncing around those pilings can be especially deadly. Um, and it can also be even more deadly if you tip it with a fish bite, a strip of a fish bite. Uh, the Panhandle flounder, they average a couple pounds, but can reach and do exceed six pounds. And then staying inshore, the mango snapper are starting to stack up pretty good around the jetties, the bridges the docks in the bays. Uh, this is the time of year where the mangrove snapper fishing in the bay gets pretty good. Uh, the Destin's East Jetty on the incoming tide and the Destin Bridge are both great places to catch mangroves right now, as are the jetties in Panama City and Pensacola. Uh, and any near nearby structure that, you know, the marinas and docks. Uh, best to fish them on a moving tide using small live baits like pilchards, menhaden, and shrimp. Either free line them or add a couple split shots or a small slip sinker, depending on the current and the depth. Um, also, be sure to use small hook, a light leader as mangroves are notoriously leader shy. The bay mangroves are definitely smaller than the ones caught deeper in the Gulf. A 10 to 14 inch uh, bay mangrove is a pretty good one. And then moving offshore, amberjacks reopened August 1st and are definitely back on everyone's radar. And there are some big jacks being caught. Uh, the best jack fishing is coming from structure in deeper water, both man-made structure and natural bottom areas. Look for higher relief spots, the, the higher relief wrecks like shrimp boats, tugboats, and other metal structures, and also the natural ledges that have a, you know a good a good relief on them in 200 plus feet of water. A lively high energy baits on a long leader are best. Red fin herrings, blue runners, and if you keep them alive, a small bonita all make excellent amberjack baits. You want to fish them on a slip sinker rig with a long leader and drop it to the depth that you're marking the fish and, and be sure to keep baits in the water fishing after you hook up a jack that oftentimes fires up the other ones to, to bite. And then also high speed butterfly style jigs rapidly work upward through the water column work very well. And then finally moving offshore, the King Mackerel fishing has been very productive on the near shore spots throughout the panhandle. Anywhere you have some concentrations of bait, you're likely to find some king mackerel. And the calm bays we've been having lately are excellent for finding those bait schools. Basically, if you're out running around 
on a calm day in 60 to 80 feet of water and you see cigar minnows or herring up on, on top of the water, stop, nose hook a cigar minnow or, or a herring bait, bump troll them around the bait schools. Additionally, bottom structure like barges, concrete piles, and limestone ledges and you know, 80 to 90 foot of water, great spots for kings. The king mackerel are running 8 to 15 pounds, but there's also been quite a few bonus sailfish showing up these past few days. And there's a photo of a nice king caught this week. Nice early morning photo, good lighting. Slow trolling, live baits around the bait schools. That's some good lighting right there, Pat. It looks good. I like that picture. Hey, uh, thanks, Pat. That's a great report. As always, here are the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots for the Panhandle region. Inshore, black snapper or mangroves on pilings and other bay structure using live pilchards or shrimp. And offshore, amberjacks on large deep water structure using live blue runners. That's good lighting, Tommy. Uh, you I, like this lighting? I'm proud of that lighting. I like that lighting. I know, you got yeah. good lighting in your pictures. Photo nerd, you know. <laughs> All right, CCA has a little FYI for our viewers. The Pathfinder and Spider Boat is still up for grabs in the 11th West Marine Tagged Redfish Division of CCA Florida Star presented by Yamaha. In fact, there are lots of other boats to be won in the other inshore and offshore divisions as well. And did you know a flounder could also win you prizes in the CCA Florida Star competition? For that matter, any fish you can this summer could win you prizes just by entering your catch in the Power Pole Conservation Division of Star. With 17 divisions and $500,000 in prizes, the remainder of your summer fishing could really be rewarding. But you have to be a CCA member and registered for Star to enter your photos. So go to www.ccaflstar.com to register. All right, the Star Tron Central West and Fish Bites East Region captains are getting us hooked up for the weekend next, so stay tuned and we'll be right back here on the Florida Insider Fisher Report. Thank you, I was running out of breath. <laughs> this baby's got my lungs all squished. <laughs> Welcome back. We're getting prepped and ready for some flounder fights in the Startron Central West region. Flounder fights. And Captain Jeff Page has all the moves. Talk to us, Page. Okay. Well, okay. you just said it in the Startron Central West region. Our flounder fishing can be spotty during these warmer months unless you go out into the Gulf and fish around the artificial reefs from a mile to three miles. But our best time to catch flounder is once that water temperature starts dropping down to say 75 down below that November, December, January. And these fish will come in the bays from the Gulf to feed on finger mullet and crabs around the oyster bars. And there's a few different ways you can fish them. Of course, you wanna have them when they're laid in the sand holes around the oyster bars like in Palmasola Bay, Terracia Bay, and then down south in Lemon Bay on the oyster bars just offside the ICW. You can use live bait or artificials, and believe it or not, you can keep your bait up off the bottom with a cork, and they'll come up and grab it, or you can put it on the bottom with, say, a 1-0 or a 2-0 circle hook and a split shot. If you like using soft plastics, the fish bite shrimp on a quarter or 3 8 jig head will work real well, and I suggest moving it as slow as you can trying to create a little kick up on that mud and those flounders will come and grab it. Now in the summertime, if you did want to catch them, 16 to 20 feet of water around artificial reefs in the Gulf, and you will come across one while you're fishing inside the bay. I've got a couple photos tonight. We're going way back with one of them to me and Dave Farrell in the Marlin Magazine Aww. hat. <laughs> Look at Dave. Looking good there, guys. That was yeah, a big one. and that was a stud flounder we caught during November, December around the dock there. And then the second one was just a real pretty fish that I caught on the grass flat. Nice. And in shore, the snook fishing, Tommy, remains really good throughout the entire region. And I'm getting good reports of nighttime fishing, especially down the mouth of the uh, Mayaka River at El Bean Bridge. And then also all around the mouth of the Manatee River on Emerson Point. And it's really easy to access that area. You can park your car at Emerson Point parking lot and wade fish with lures like topwater plugs, the Berkeley uh, lip plug. Um, it's called a cutter, and it'll run in that three to five foot range. You like using soft plastic, the saltwater assassin, four inch sea shad in the golden brim color with a chartreuse jig head works real well. Fish out on the beach around the passes with live pilchards, 
free line or cork. And then the nighttime fishing, the guys have been doing good with live ladyfish and silver mullet uh, when the tide's really been moving good. I've got a snook photo tonight of a happy family. I did not get their last name, but they were with Captain Billy Alstrom of Suncoast Fishing Charters. And then we're going to move offshore now. Red grouper fishing remains really good, according to Captain Tim No and Captain Jason Stock. They say 130 to 160 has been the depth, and you want to spend not too long on smaller hard bottom areas. Cool thing is you don't have to worry about bringing a bunch of live bait because they're eating the frozen sardines real good. And look for bait stacks on these bottom hard bottom areas, and you're going to do better. And that's a big red grouper photo there of Captain Tim's first mate, Anthony, and a happy client. <laughs> Wow, what? that is a monster red grouper. That, that was the biggest one he's caught on his new boat. That was 28 pounds. Nice. Wow. Tell me about the yellowtail snapper, Jeff. He's real quick. Yellowtail snapper, Captain Jason Stock's been limiting out, and he's been fishing them on light jig heads, shrimp, or light wire circle hooks, 110 feet on out. And that last photo tonight is a couple nice yellowtails with a nice mango snapper mixed in. All right, it's pretty fish. Thanks, Jeffrey. Always good. Here are the Daiquiri Deck hotspots for the Central West region. Inshore, mangrove snapper. Fish the old Skyway rubble around South Tampa Bay with live pinfish or pilchards rigged on 30-pound fluorocarbon with a one or two-aught light wire circle hook. And then offshore, lots of permit holding on the near shore, three to 11-mile reefs off Stump Pass. Live pass crabs are your best bet as a bait. Best bet is bait. Best bait is bait. that yes. five times really fast. All right, big flounder in the Fish Bites East region are still in the ocean, but as bait stacks up in the inlets, so will the flounder. Let's see what else Captain Mike Holiday has for us. Go for it, Mike. But, you know, Jim Ross kind of hit on it. A lot of the fish are in the ocean and around the inlets when the bait stacks up. August and September produce some of the largest flounder of the year. And, you know, uh, most of them are going to be in the ocean. So if you're going to be out there diving, uh, for lobster, carry a pole spear and you'll be able to maybe shoot one of those fish. Uh, you'll find them on the patch reefs along the beaches or around the inlets where the bait and the minnow schools are lying on the shore. So places like uh, the South Jetty and Fort Pierce has a lot of bait right now, as does the St. Lucie Inlet. They'll see big fish. Um, at the same time, there's an inshore group of flounder that'll congregate around the juvenile pilcher to mullet schools that start to gang up around the catwalks of the bridges right now and around the bridge ponds, usually in close to shore. Places like South Bridge and Fort Pierce, um, the, the uh, Little Jim Bridge in Fort Pierce does really well, the Jensen Beach Causeway and the Stewart Causeway bridges. And flounder are really aggressive, usually grab the baitfish by the tail, talked about that a little bit. So you wanna give them the count of 30 or so before you set the hook. What I always do is bring a net and then I would feel the fish, you kind of lift the rod, you can feel it move, go get the net, Usually takes you a few time, few seconds to do that, and then come back and stick them, and then you can land them. Uh, they're like a, a, a finger mullet, a killifish, a sand perch, or a pilchard. I fish them on a 2.0 trocar uh, Kelly hook uh, with a rubber core sinker. I like to put like a uh, half ounce rubber core sinker about four inches ahead of the hook, or fish a 3 8 ounce jig head. Crawl the bait on the bottom. Um, when it stops, that's a fish. Average flounder, my range is going to be like two to five, but the fish out in the ocean are gonna be up to 10. Uh, got a good shot of a couple doormats. That's Captain Keith Grandchamp uh, with a pair of doormat flounder out of Fort Pierce. And he caught those fish on live finger moth. The other inshore, inshore bite, you know, if catching a big snook is on your bucket list, this is the time to get on the water. We'll see a lot of the largest fish of the summer spawn coming into the inlets and onto the beaches with this new moon. Um, everywhere from uh, the Lake Worth and Juno Piers, to all the inlets, Hope Sound Wildlife Refuge, Bob Graham Beach, Walton Rocks Beach, <coughs> Vero Cove. They'll all good, have good snook action right now. This is also a good time to hit the bridges at night or the spillways on the rainy afternoons for that one real big fish. Uh, around the inlets, live baits king, croakers, sardines, thread fins, and pilchards are gonna be your top baits on the beach. The pilchard schools are lining the shore uh, so a lot of anglers are going to throw flies or artificials like a, a saltwater assassin, four-inch sea shad, and a copper juice or gray ghost color. Works till about mid-morning, then everybody switches to live bait. Average snook is 5 to 12 pounds with fish topping 25 pounds in the mix. All right, I'm offshore, Mike. Tell me about the sailfish. 
Well, you know, that summer sailfish bite continues to be the most consistent action for blue water anglers out of really from like Hope Sound all the way up to Jensen Beach. The best action has been anywhere from 90 to 130 feet of water. But look for that action to push in shallower over the next couple of weeks <clears throat> as the bait fish schools start to move into that 60 to 80 foot depth. Um, a lot of the boats are seeing fish, but the guys who are really catching them and catching multiples are targeting the sails. They're pulling either natural or artificial teasers just to bring the fish in. Then they're deploying live baits, either sight fishing them or throwing, putting baits out on kites and drawing them to the kites. Most of the sails are big, so you control rig value or mullet if you want to cover water. But you know, the best stuff is going to be slow trolling or drifting with live goggle eyes. If you can get them, pilchards, thread fins, and sardines are going to work just as well. It seems like the better concentrations of fish are along that eight mile reef or wherever there's a good current edge, like right around that 110, 120 foot range. Average sailfish is 30 to 40 pounds. I have a photo one that's Brian Scott of Stewart. He sight fished that sailfish that was swimming on the surface in 109 feet of water, and that fish ate a lot. Threadfin. The other offshore bite, the mangrove snapper bite from Hope Sound to Vero Beach has been epic. Oh, for like a week now. A lot of three to eight pound fish are being caught on the reefs in 65 to 90 feet of water. The key is to find the good water, which is really anything over 80 degrees with a north current. If there's no current or a south current, the bite tends to not be very good. Most of the hardcore snapper crew are anchoring up and chumming with cut sardines or juvenile pilchers or even glass minnows. Then they're dropping down everything from a, a live pinfish to a, a, a dead sardine or half a thread fin or a sargent, cigar minnow. Seems like the larger fish, those over seven or eight pounds are coming at night, but the daytime bite's producing you know, limits of those chunky two to three pound mangroves. So if you're looking for some groceries, really good time to head to the reef. That sounds pretty good, Mike. Tell me about the bass this week. Well, the bass bite on Headwaters Lake in Felsmere continues to produce both big fish and big numbers. According to Captain Nathan Shellen of Okeechobeebassfishing.com, he's starting his day pitching a frog or a swim bait up into the grass and then just crawling it out slowly, pausing the bait and any holes in the grass. As the day heats up, he switches over to fishing the edges of the hydrilla mats with prop baits or a black with a blue tail or June bug colored little tapper worm, or he's working a submerged grass with a rail worm with a one eighth ounce weight in those same colors, just kind of crawling it real slowly in the grass. The fish are kind of lethargic in the heat, so you want to work the baits with long pauses to encourage a fish to come out of the out of the grass and blast it. Sean says he's average, averaging like 20 to 30 fish on artificials then switching to shiners, looking for that big fish. And then those are adding another 20 fish or so. So, you know, it's like a 40 to 50 fish morning, average fish, three to four pound range. And usually, you know, one or two over seven pounds. And I got a big one right here. Uh, Andy Steinberg's of Vero Beach. He caught that nine pound bass in the Headwaters Reservoir. And that fish ate a top water plug. Nice. nice. Good That's lighting, huh, Tommy? Good lighting again. I like it. Hey, Mike. <laughs> I like that hat, man. It looks good on you. How about yeah. those bahias? How, how much more relaxed are your eyes at the end of the day after wearing those sunglasses? Zero eye fatigue at the end of the day. That's right. Zero Love eye it. fatigue. I've noticed the same thing, man. I've gone through a bunch of different lens combinations and I'm but impressed with all of them. Yeah, it doesn't seem to matter. I'm wearing the rose colored lenses a lot. That's, that's what I've been wearing as well. So, all right, Mike, thanks so much, man. Great report. Here are that's the TH Marine hotspots for the East region. Inshore, catch and release snook from the beach at Hope Sound Wildlife Refuge, baitfish pattern flies or copper juice sea shad. Offshore, mutton snapper in the 85 to 100 foot of water off Lake Worth Inlet, grunt plugs, sardines, cigar minnows, and jigging spoons. So I have a question, random, that just popped in my head. Have you ever seen an actual doormat with a flounder on it? No, you should you should make them. You can Million market them. dollar idea That's to the to idea. the Alvey Reels Northeast region only. Yes, we would sell. Like we would sell out. It would work. Okay, It'd be great. Just wondering. All right, Floridians, <laughs> you fish with Rick. I fish with Rick. If you ever want to fish with Captain Rick Murphy, now is your chance. Thanks to Florida Coast Equipment, the grand prize winner will get a day of inshore fishing with Rick and two friends, and the second prize winner will have their choice of inshore or offshore fishing with the Fiffer guide of their choice. Voice and two friends head to floridacoasteq.com forward slash fishing with Rick for more information on how to register and good luck. Can you do that again? That was Tommy's fish with me face. Yep. That's good. Like All right, me. sit pretty Floridians. We're visiting the Real Legend Southwest region coming up and seeing what shiny new things that Dave has for us at the Taco Marine new products segment.
Yeah. What's it going to be, Dave? Booze. Got some booze. Booze. All right. That sounds what? great. What? You're not supposed to drink booze. I don't know what that is, is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Will you tell me? We'll Vodka. be back. It's Vodka. All right, Dave, the Taco Marine, new products here. Yes, sir. What do we got? We got some well, cool stuff. We're going to start off with these Real Legends long sleeve shirts. Um, really cool. You know, I it's hard for me to get people to wear long sleeve shirts sometimes, you know, because they always like to wear their short sleeves because they think it's cooler. But, you know, you never see a guy wandering around in the desert, you know, with a wife beater on. They're always covered <laughs> right. up. Right. You know, you're supposed to cover yourself up. I wear a long up. sleeve shirt every day. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, if, and off, if you've yeah. got long sleeves on your arms, it not only does it keep the sun off your skin, but it makes you sweat a little bit more. And when you got a good fab fabric, this it feels breeze. really light. Exactly. And it, and it evaporates off you and, and actually cools you. You know, when the sun's directly hitting your skin, it's not doing you any favors, you or your skin. It's a quick dry moisture wicking technology, UPF 40. Uh, it's cool looking here. All the, yeah, the art here is done by Linnea Zamansky, really pretty stuff that she does, all the prints and, and there stuff. There um, You know, and they come in a bunch of additional colors and, and styles, so you can get these uh, at reallegends.com. I, I totally agree with you. You got, if you're you got to cover wall, up. You got to wear long sleeves, and, and they make a lot of these shirts with hoods on them, even that yeah. help cover up a little bit more. Exactly. So. Cover up. Good stuff. Keep that stuff off your skin. Next, you know, Pompano. We catch Pompano year round. Actually, they're really strong up in your area right now. Um, they've passed us and have gone up to where you live right now. So. If you're wanting to go catch a Pompano, head up to Tommy's area. Yeah. But these are uh, from Pompano Rich. These are his new Pompano catchers. He makes different ones for different water clarity. What is this? What is this little guy? Well, these are the cool little floats that he's got. They're uh, they rep replicate the Yakamiya or Yakima little little corkies. He's got a he's got the mold for these things, so nobody can copy them. They're anti crab. They're, they got a little hard shell on them. So oh, cool. Real you know, durable. Usually the crabs will. Grab a hold and tear your floats all to pieces. You know when they're trying to get to your bait, they can't. They can't hurt these things. And this, and they're so buoyant, they'll they'll actually float your bait above the stem oh, when cool. you've got yeah. it out here. So to keep and it off the it bottom. He's got it rigged with a swivel, and then he's got for the yep. weight on the end yep. there. Nice big duro block for the for the uh, weight. Thirty pound fluorocarbon leader and uh, really nice good. Circle he makes, hooks. Yeah, really sharp circle hooks. He makes three different colors here for blue water, uh, green water, and aqua water. So, you know. They catch everything. It says pompano catchers, but they catch whiting, they catch bluefish, they catch permit, they redfish. anything, redfish, we catch anything that's floating in the surf that'll eat uh, shrimp cool. and a fish bites or fish Never gum, seen that whatever. They'll, cool. they'll eat it. Exactly. Pompanorich.net to go get one of those. All right. Next we have a nose guard boat odor eliminator. You know, this is a actual odor eliminator. It's not a perfume. It doesn't cover up an odor. What this does is it's got a little sponge in there and a little product and you wet the sponge with the product and you put it in the, in the, in the package and uh, let it sit. And it, what it does is it creates a gas that kills all the odors in your car, keeps it nice and fresh and clean. It smells like a pool. I know a lot of friends that could, use, that could use this for their yeah. truck. <laughs> it's, yeah, I need to know, get this it, for some Christmas it, presents. Mold, mildew, pets, food, smoke, you know, all that stuff, it's, you know, it gets it garbage. And uh, f each pouch will, will treat a 10 by 10 by 10 room, uh, oh, 1,000 wow. cubic feet. So, you know, get one of those. It's, it's got chlorine dioxide gas, and it destroys all the odors. Uh, you know, just make sure you follow the directions. Don't let your kids or your pets get in there before it gets to air right. out because uh, it's good stuff. Starbite.com. Last but not least. Yeah, you were chugging this a second ago. I so. was giving a little taste, man. It tastes <laughs> really good. I smell uh, it. It smells good. It does. It's an, it's, this is Atoll Vodka. It's made by a couple of captains here in Florida, Tristan Hunt and Weston Garcidia. Garcidia. And, um, you know, they're boat captains in South Florida, and they've decided that they're going to go into the booze business, which is, you know, perfect for a captain, I would think. Uh, <laughs> this right. is uh, infused with citrus and botanical flavors. It, You know, when I popped it off and smelled it, it smells, if you ever had a kamikaze, a citrusy, you know, shooter drink. That's exactly what it smelled like. It smells like, like a kamikaze already. You probably so just put it, it on would ice. probably make awesome kamikazes yeah. is the first yeah. thing I thought. Right. Um, but it, it's a nice lemon lime and with that hint of botanicals in there. It's not sweet, you know, it's six times distilled. And uh, pretty soon you're going to be able to find it all over South Florida. Uh, Very cool. If you go to uh, at a told under dash vodka on Instagram. 
uh, you can look over, just type in Atoll Vodka, and uh, nice. you should be able to go to it. Bree, I'm really excited about this. I don't know oh. about, are you? Oh, you. Yeah. You over there. You'll yeah. be able to have some soon. I will. <laughs> Two weeks uh, or sooner. That'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> All right. This weekend has a lot to offer us anglers in the Real Legends Southwest region. So let's see if Captain Ronnie Houston can point us in the right direction. Go for it, Ronnie. Well, you know what? Uh, a flounder is not really uh, common in the, in the uh, Real Legends Southwest region, but I can tell you what, the redfish are. And I'm actually getting good reports up in the north end of the region from Captain Corey McGuire. And I have been fishing up there quite a bit, so his report is pretty consistent. I want to concentrate on the east side of Charlotte Harbor, as well as the Mount Lachey area from the bridge to the power line. Concentrate your efforts on both sides of the intercoastal. And you know what? You want to concentrate your efforts on the lower water, deeper troughs, potholes off the shorelines, and the fish seem to be also grouped up traveling along the edges. Now on the higher water, we want to concentrate on points of current, as well as cuts along the mangroves and oyster bars that are submerged. Now with the abundance of bait that's up there, and I've been seeing for the last several weeks, your live pilchards and your live pinfish and cut ladyfish, as well as cut pinfish or cut mullet are going to work for the redfish. But also, you know what, even in the heat of the day or first thing in the morning, your top water walk the door glories right now are really good for the redfish. They seem to be grouping up in the schools. The quarter ounce gold spoons and four inch soft plastic paddle tails and I got a prime example of a nice fish. Actually, this redfish here has been caught down in the southern end of the region. The red fishing right now is really up in the north end. Second species is going to be the trout. Southern end, rabbit key pass, the round key. You know, there's a variety of ways to catch them on lower water, off the edges of the outer Gulf Islands. You want to concentrate your efforts right now in depths of two to four foot of water. I strongly recommend the noise-making corks, like the Bass Assassin noise-making oval quick cork with an eight ounce jig head and the four inch bass assassin split tails. Colors have been Snowstorm, Houdini, or Chico's Red Air. Now on the higher water, you can use the same soft plastic, but you're gonna to go to a heavy jig head and you're gonna be fan casting on the higher water in those areas where the potholes and grass are. But for the bigger trout, your top water walk the dog lure is similar to the Berkeley hijackers. Colors are chrome or bone along the points with good current flow. If you're looking for a big trout, 22, 25 inches, Concentrate your efforts on that pattern. Four schools of roaming mullet, as well as the fry bait that's also ganging up. But then also look for them diving pelicans. I got a picture of a nice trout that was caught with Captain Brian Sanders down in the southern end of the region. You know, the offshore report, the permit. Powers, wrecks, artificial reefs from Marco to Fort Myers Beach. Reports quite a few fish as close to seven miles out, seven miles and out to 20 miles. Also, I can tell you right now on the few offshore trips I've run lately, Having that handy, there's plenty of live flat crabs drifting along everywhere in case you can't buy them at your local base store. But you want to be free lining the crabs behind the back of the boat, especially drifting with the wind, weighted and unweighted to see where these fish might be in the water column or simply a anchoring up. If you can't find the fish this way, you're going to have to use the run and gun bite. But the rest reports have been, fish seem to be grouped up getting out early. I have a nice picture of a permit caught up in the northern end of the region with Captain Corey McGuire. Final species is going to be the red groupers. That fight's been great and consistent. Captain Mike Avenar reports from Gordon's Pass to Fort Myers Beach. Depths have been 85 to 105 feet. Cut baits have been working well, whether it be squid, herring, and sardines. Most important thing is the bait's got to be on the bottom. You can use fresh cut herring. Has been working well along with cut pinfish. Or you can simply drift with bucktails tipped with squid, also producing. Get a picture of a couple of nice red groupers recently caught. Now the offshore side, want to become a better fisherman? Keep an eye on that bottom finder and more time in the water so you can make you become successful to get them keeper size groupers. Nice, thanks. Hey, Ronnie, I got a quick question for you. I saw your brother got on a pretty good lobster a couple of days. Were you in on that action? No, I wasn't in on that. I, I decided not to go this year, but you know what? He kept, we catch him like that all the time. Like I say, putting in the time and all the years we've been able to do that growing up as kids till now. Lobster usually show up in the same spot. But putting in the time will get you quick limits, fully net at night down on the eastern side of the reef. Nice. I, I looked like a pretty good haul there. I'll, I'll have to give him a call, see if he's got a Don't couple of extra jealous. ones. Yeah, Don't be right. jealous. Don't be jealous. Always got time for you, Tommy. <laughs> OK. Thanks, Roddy. Here are the caddy can hotspots for the southwest region. Inshore, tarpon, beaches, and passes from Fort Myers Beach to Boca Grande. Scan horizon for free jumping fish. And offshore, mangrove snappers on the wrecks and ledges. Stump pass to Sanibel and 75 to 95 feet, chumming with live pinfish or whitebait on a knocker rig. You were in the Keys for many season. I was. How'd it go? 
It was fun. We didn't do a whole lot of, a whole lot of lobster. But you the did kids, lot. Yeah, did you get a few? Yeah, we got okay. a few. We got a few. We had a little taste tester in there. So. That's good. Yeah, it was when fun. you have three kids. It can be hot. tough. It was hot. Yeah, it's very hot. Yes. All right. Well, <laughs> Tommy, you know, Bahio sunglasses are definitely the summer trend out there on the water. And all you have to do to win a pair is enter in the My Bahio Summer Contest. Share a photo or video of your fishing paradise and tag and follow hashtag My Bahio and at Bahio Sunglasses. If your favorite fish spot is chosen, you will win a free pair of shades and other Bahio gear like Captain Mike was wearing the hat. I know I have oh, a really yeah. cool oversized t-shirt right now, but one winner will be chosen every <laughs> Friday until the end of the summer, which is quickly approaching. Yeah, it is. Thank the Lord. All right, we're seeing what the Alvey Reels Northeast and Keys Region captains are blessing us with this fine weekend, so stay tuned and Tommy, get ready. I'm ready. And also remember to keep up with everything fishing in Florida. Make sure to head on over to our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and to see new fishing adventures along with reports, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy. We'll see you soon. The floor. Well, Tommy, at this point, I think everyone has agreed that the Northeast region is definitely the home of the Flounder Pounder. I think it is. You Flounder. have to agree? That's right. I think yeah. so. Flounder Pounder is a huge tournament we have. My buddy Chip Davis runs. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Lots of big flounder. So. Door maths for everybody. Door maths All for right, everybody. let's get to your report, All shall right, we? You know what? I'm really excited. We're talking about flounder this week. The Alvey Sidecast Reels Northeast region. We have a lot of them like we've been talking about and some really big ones too. You know, flounder, they're a year round target in my region. Although the late summer and fall seem to produce some of our biggest fish. Uh, during the hot summer months like we're in now, along with our redfish, flounder, they're gonna be a daily staple for all of our charter captains and all of our fishermen. You know, they're one of the fish that don't really seem to be bothered so much by these really hot water temperatures we have. You know, this weekend's gonna be a good example. We have an afternoon low tide and it's gonna be hot, but the lower tide is almost always gonna be the best bet to target those flounder. Now, as the tide gets low and the bait gets grouped up into those small creek mouths, the holes, the runouts, those flounder are gonna go into feed mode. Now, it's not uncommon to catch more than a few in a really small spot where that bait is congregating. Now, the jetties and the docks are also favorite flounder haunts. Again, that's gonna be best on that lower tide stage. Now, probably the most common and effective rigs for flounder, like we were talking about the workbench earlier, is gonna be a jig head or a fish finder rig with enough weight to hold the bottom. Now, a finger mullet or a big mud minnow are gonna be the go-to baits. But you know what, flounder, they're aggressive fish and they're definitely gonna eat a saltwater assassin paddle tail or even a topwater, which nobody else has really talked about. But yeah, I've had clients catch flounder on a topwater plug, which is pretty cool to see. Now, I'm looking forward to the next couple of months of flounder fishing as we start to see those doormat size fish. And speaking of doormats, oh, I've go. got a picture here. Let's this see is it. my man, oh, my, my, my guys, Captain Colin Phillips and Roy Hendricks with some doormats that they caught in Jacksonville na near Mayport. Those guys are Dang. always on the flatties. Quad, They're, quad they, up. they are the flounder pounders, those two guys. Nice. Now, you know, staying inshore, you know, I was talking about topwater a second ago, and you know, we have a good morning incoming tide to toss the topwater for redfish this weekend. There's a ton of perfect size finger mullet in the south end of the region right now. And those redfish, they're gonna be feeding in and around those schools early along the grass lines. And my clients have also been doing well by tossing a popping cork with a mud minnow or one of those live finger mullet along the grass. I'll have them use about 18 inches of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader and a three-aught eagle claw circle hook, and you can put a little pinch weight on there as well. Now, toss that cork anywhere you see those schools of mullet, and you're gonna have a good chance of hooking into a redfish or even a flounder for that matter. Now, once the tide backs out, it's gonna be hot, and the fish are gonna be slowing down, and that's when I'm gonna use a cut piece of mullet or a cut piece of crab. And with the water hot and murky, that cut bait, it's been, you know, it's easy for those redfish to find it because they can smell it. And those reds have been hanging out really shallow for me in the south end of St. Augustine this week on the flats and in the backs of the creeks, even in that hot water, which is a little strange, but it's been good. And I got a couple of pictures here. I had brothers Chris and Casey Fields out this week along with their dad, and they caught some big redfish up shallow. And you know what? I can still hear them talking trash about whose fish was bigger. Mm. And I'm not gonna say which one was bigger, no, but you're not allowed. there was some good, <laughs> there was some good fish. You're Switzerland. That's right. Good job, guys. Now, moving offshore, you know, we're still in Kingfish tournament season, and the Kingbuster was last weekend with some big fish being weighed in. 
The winning fish was just shy of 50 pounds and the kingfish bite, you know, it's still going strong both along the beach and offshore. But most of the reports I've got this week started with how good the bite is, but the sharks, they're super thick as well. And you know, getting a whole kingfish to the boat is gonna be a struggle in some areas right now. I did speak with Captain Jason Hodges who told me he's been getting fairly easy limits on the nearshore stuff and not losing too many fish by trolling spoons and planers. You know, you can troll those a little faster than the live bait guys and you can get those fish in a little bit quicker and that's been the ticket. Now also offshore, sailfish. You know, we've had a good sailfish bite happening on the nearshore reefs. I've had multiple reports of guys hooking up to sailfish in as close as four miles, which is really close for us, not so much for down here. But I spoke to Captain Tony Nesbitt from GreatDayFishingCharters.com. He told me this really cool sailfish story. You know, while he and his clients were king fishing near Nine Mile Reef, they hooked into a sailfish. Captain Tony said he heard on the radio that he had a sailfish, or somebody had a sailfish hooked and it was jumping, but he didn't think it was what they had on their line. As they were gaining some line back, they came within shouting distance of another boat who was also hooked up. Ended up, they were both hooked into that same sailfish. All their hooks were in that sailfish's mouth. Tony actually landed the fish after a good fight and both <laughs> boats actually got to take some pictures. That's awesome. Which is pretty cool. And here is a picture of Tony reviving that sailfish between the two boats there, getting ready to release them. And uh, that's a really cool bite when we have that going on this time of year. You can take a, a, even a skiff out there some days and catch a sailfish. Like I tell my three-year-old, sharing is caring. Sharing is caring, that's right. <laughs> that's awesome, Tommy. All right, let's take a look at your strike zone hotspots for the Northeast region, shall we? Yes, we shall. Go you know, it. inshore, the flounder, we've been talking a lot about them on the low tie stage all around the area. Inlets target the rocks, the riprap, and the nearby docks, and then offshore, sailfish and those kingfish on the nearshore reefs out of St. Augustine. I would have read them for you, but you know, my I got a situation, lung, lung capacity I, I situation right it. now. All right, let's head down to the Alto Equipment Keys region and see what we're catching this weekend with Captain Randy Tao. Go for it, Randy. Hey, good evening, fish fans. You know, here in the Alto Equipment region, we don't really have many flounders, especially in the backcountry. Um, it's rare to catch a flounder but what we do have right now are the slimy bonefish. They have made a showing the last couple of weeks, and I've been hearing a lot of reports from guys throughout the Keys, the Upper Keys, Lower Keys, even all the way down to Key West. Um, Captain Richard Black with Blackfly Charters, he's been trailering his boat from Ala Mirada to Key West, fishing with some guys that wanted to catch bonefish and having great success down there just west of Key West. And then uh, Captain Dave Dankert, a local guide here out of the Lorelei, he caught 10 bonefish and two permit just a couple days ago. So tides are good right now, weather's been good, and there's been a lot of fish around. Now they're not big, they're on the smaller side, so you've got to look for them. They don't tail as like they used to. So you're looking for fish in about three to four feet of water. You're gonna see them kind of dust up the water. You find that water where it's a little bit off color. And that's what you're looking for. It's not real obvious. It's uh, They're really hard to see. That's why the nickname is the Gray Ghost. But uh, if you get lined up with them, with a fly or a shrimp, you're probably gonna get a bite from one. And I've got a photo from Captain Donnie Bembo with Skins and Fins Charters, who's been catching his share right here around Isla Mirada. Nice, Randy, tell me about the tarpon. You know, tarpon fishing has been, you know, this time of year, it's good. It's bad, you know, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. It just depends where you are. There's tarpon throughout the region, down in the lower keys, back country. We don't really have them around the bridges like we did in the spring, but certainly in the back country, if you get there in the mornings and you've got your conditions lined up, you can have some great fishing. Um, there's been some big ones uh, lately, 100 pounders, guys are catching on the fly rod. And a lot of this is short-lived, so it's not something that's going to last throughout the day, but it's certainly a morning thing, and um, guys are catching a few on bait as well in the backcountry. And I know down in the Lower Keys and the Marathon area, those mangrove islands will uh, hold some real nice uh, 10 to 30-pound fish around the islands, which is a lot of fun. And also, uh, that backcountry, a marathon, is not a bad place to look. And... Uh, our own Tommy Derringer was here last week with his family, and they were in the backcountry looking around, and he got into some tarpon with his five-year-old daughter, Easton, and I've got a picture of her very first tarpon she caught. 
That's awesome, Randy. She's in the yeah. studio tonight. She's excited about that. That was that was a lot of fun. Thanks, man. Uh, that's just very cool to do stuff like that. That's what it's all about. You know, the lobstering last week, we had mini season. And people look at mini season a couple different ways. And uh, for me, it's a soft spot because it was something that I did growing up as a kid. And I did it with my family as my girls grew up. And it was two days of getting in the boat and doing things together as a family. And uh, I, I think it's very cool that people still do that and uh, they come to the Keys. It's crowded, yes, and it's uh, aggravating with traffic, yes. But, you know, you're doing something that may not last forever. And uh, it's certainly some quality time and memories you make with your family doing it. And the mini season was pretty good. Guys did pretty well. I got into it uh, on, on the first day. We caught quite a few up in the upper keys. And uh, I know the lower keys guys did pretty well. Uh, Paul Lucas was here from Vero with his family. And his two girls are, they just love to get in the water and catch lobsters. And he sent me this picture of their limit they caught down in Ramrod. Nice. That's a good haul there. Tell me about the dolphin, Randy. You know, the uh, the dolphin fishing is still okay. It's it's tough when uh, you're looking for birds. That's the key right now. There's not as much weed action as we had, which is, uh, which is okay because you can troll without getting tangled up. But the birds are key. You know, 600, we've had some calm weather, so it's a little bit deeper. 600 to 800 feet is where a lot of guys are looking. And get there early. You know, early morning really is going to hold... Uh, the difference between getting on a set of birds and being successful and waiting till after lunch and not seeing any. And uh, I've got a great story from David Lohman. He, uh, he's a fan of the show. He was down here with his family. He had reached out to me about uh, what the dolphin were doing. He listened to our audio reports and uh, I gave him a little bit of advice, kind of gave him some direction where the fish have been. And he went out and this is the photo he sent back to me with his happy anglers of uh, much success. Oh, nice. nice. Gotta love it when a plan works out. Good job, Randy. Perfect. Here are the hot spots for the Keys region. Inshore, bonefish, fish the incoming tide. Look for small schools of fish swimming along the edges of the flats in two to three feet of water. And offshore, those dolphins, start looking for birds in 600 feet. Work your way south so you can intercept the birds. Once you find them, stay in your lane of depth and direction. Stay in your lane. Stay in your own lane. And that was Easton's first tarpon, right? That was her first Yay, one. Yay, congrats. Proud, proud, proud Papa. Yeah. All right, well, here is your weekly reminder that if you would like a chance to win this exact 1952 Chevy 3100 hot rod we have here in the studio, all you have to do is purchase raffle tickets at ccaflorida.org forward slash hot rod, and obviously you have to win it. That's the second criteria right there. And thank Captain Rick, because he's donating it, which yeah, is really nice. I don't really know why cool. he's doing that. but. Yeah. Maybe one, maybe we'll win. Yeah. That'd be nice. We that can share nice. it. All right, stay tuned, ladies and gents. <laughs> no sharing. Sharing is not caring here. <laughs> We're exploring the R and R Tackle Southeast region when we come back here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. So get your gear ready and stay put. We'll see you soon. Well, that's just worth it right there. Hundred bucks. That is. Plus, and that's a lot easier than using a regular anchor. Plus a good product. All right, there's always lots of options for our anglers in the R and R tackle southeast region. So let's hear from Captain Jimbo Thomas and see what they are this weekend. Go for it, Jimbo. Hey Bree, Tommy, and Dave. Well, you know, talking about flounder, unfortunately the southeast region is not a flounder hotspot. The ones that are caught are usually a surprise catch while fishing for other species. And they're usually encountered around rock piles and jetties, dock pilings, and on the grass flats around the sandy pot, sandy potholes. Most of them are, are caught by snook and trout fishermen since they all hang around that same type of structure. Now the baits that they generally fall for are jigs tipped with shrimp, scented jerk baits along with live pilchards and live finger mullet. And the few that we've caught over the years have been on small live baits and we've usually caught them around the, the rock jetties when we're snook fishing. But now moving on to something that we do catch in the southeast region are snook. And this is prime time to target some snook in the inlets. Now all of the inlets throughout the region, they've been holding snook and a lot of them have been over slot size. It's all catch and release, so it doesn't matter. Most of the snook are being caught early in the mornings and late in the afternoons into the evenings by drifting live pinfish, pilchards, and herrings near the bottom. You want to use a Jupiter rig to get that bait down deep. Or you can try bouncing one to two ounce flare hawk jigs or jigs with chartreuse 
tails along the bottom that's been getting bites, or you can try trolling deep diving lures along the jetties and ledges. Another great way to target these snook. The alkaline tide's been best unless the water is murky, in which case they've been biting on both tides as long as that water is moving. Now moving offshore, we've been finding dolphin, and in the past week we've had some decent days, then we've had a few days that we had to work uh, really hard just to catch a few fish. We've been finding those dolphin on weed lines, patches of sargasm, and just about anything floating. Most of the fish are being found from 800 feet of water on, on out to 1,200 feet or even deeper. And there's been birds working over some of those floaters that if they're pointing them out for us. Now the fish be, are being caught on trolled ballyhoo and small lures and feathers. Once we locate the fish, we've been casting small live baits, live pilchers to work, sardines, cigar minnows, blue runners or you can try cut bonita or ballyhoo. Now, most of the fish have been schoolies in the four to eight pound range, but you never know when a larger one is gonna show up. Now, I got a photo here. This is one of our better catches of mahi in the last week, and these fish, most of them came off of floaters. Now, moving in a little closer to shore, the nighttime mangrove snapper bite's been very consistent. The mangroves, which have been in the two to seven pound range, they're being found on the outside reef in 40 to 80 feet of water, and they start to bite just after dark a lot of the nights. Some of the nights they don't start biting until after nine o'clock. You just never know till you get out there. You wanna look for marks on the fish finder or just anchor up and let those fish find you. Try to avoid, anchor, avoid anchoring on top of the reef, but instead look for a hard bottom with sea fans on the outside edge of the reef and fish with a knocker rig using just enough weight to hold bottom and a 30 pound leader and one to three oh circle hooks. Best baits have been sardines, ballyhoo plugs, and cup bonita. And if you got any lights on the boat, the pilchers and goggle eyes have been showing up. You can get those on a sabiki, put those back down for bait. Hey, Jimbo, you know, you're talking about mangrove snapper. What about those kubera snapper? Don't you guys get some of those going this time of year as well? Yep, kubera snapper around the full moon, typically of August, which that's where we're at right now and that's when we get them and also the reason that people go out in august is because you can use lobsters once lobster season opens they can they can be caught on the other full moons but everybody likes to use live lobsters for them so you can't do that in july say because lobster season's closed gotcha. so speaking of lobster season did you get out for mini season i know you like to get those little creatures um no i did not but no. on uh friday on uh, August 6th, when the real season opens, that's yeah. when they're in trouble. Oh, uh, fish shoot. Mini season. Here comes the Jimbo. I, you know what? I, I just got to say, Jimbo, you got to really love to catch a Kubera snapper to go use a lobster for bait. Y yeah. Got to really love them. They yeah. look fun. They get huge, right? They've, uh, I've caught them up to about 60 pounds. Wow. They get over 100 pounds. Uh, we used to go do it quite often, but after I caught a bunch of them, I'm like, why am I out here rocking and rolling at night wasting lobsters <laughs> to catch a fish that most of them were just going to let them go? I don't know. I might have to come down there some point and do just, that with you. It sounds like because. fun. Just to, just to say I've done it one time. It you sounds know? very bougie, and I like it. There you go. <laughs> We're using but you won't lobster. catch one with me because my my nighttime Cubera days are over. Okay, okay. Oh, well, man. thanks, Jimbo. Great report, man. Good talking to you. Here are the hot spots for the southeast region. Inshore, look for snook in all the inlets and off the beaches in the early mornings and evenings where they're eating both live and artificial baits. And offshore, look for a variety of snapper along the edges of the outside reef, fishing with live and cut baits in the evenings. All right, maybe you can convince him to do I'll one more time. It, maybe. One more time. All right, well, all nine region reports are in, and we are more than ready to go catching this weekend. Yes. But we have quite the exciting show planned for everyone next week, so stay hooked, and we'll tell you what we're taking a bite out of right here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Good job. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. We are for those who know. Those who know that opportunity is nothing without preparation. 
those who know that the right gear can make or break a day. Born out of a need for reliability, tested and proven on the Miss Brit Charter fleet. From terminal tackle to all your live boot needs, whether you're fishing for fun or looking to win a tournament, R&R Tackle has what you need to stay ready. week we are talking sharks, sharks. yes yeah, shark week here on the Everybody Florida Insider shark. Fishing Report so make sure you tune into that and look who we have sitting with baby us shark. at the workbench we got a little baby shark do 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 yep and you had your very first tarpon on this show that is so cool did you have fun catching it yeah yeah was it was it better than a redfish yeah. yes it jumped did you and you bowed to you did so good you ready to go back and catch another one? Yeah. Yeah. You gonna show your little sister how it's done? Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, Tommy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Holding down the four. I think yes. Rick would be pretty proud. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we've done it two weeks in a row without the Murph man. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week and be safe out there on the water. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.